प्रोफेसर वाली दस नाउ मूव टू मैथमेटिक्स सो फिटोसी टूरी दिस एक्सेल क्वेश्चन सो फ्रॉम फिजिक्स प्रोफेसर वाली नाउ इट्स मैथमेटिक्स क्वेश्चन थ्री क्वेश्चन सी हुआ है So you've got a function that satisfies this for all positive numbers. You have to show that if f prime of x exists at one, then f prime of x x exists everywhere. So what I'm going to do firstly is replace x and y with a and b because otherwise they're very easily confused with the x and y that we regularly use. So f of a times b is equal to f of a plus f of b. So then what would it mean to actually take the derivative? What would it mean to actually take the derivative of this? Well, uh, what I'm going to do actually is what happens if we take, for example, f prime of a b. So let me think about it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it should just be that f prime of a b is equal to f prime of a plus f prime of b by this rule. So let's uh, try this out somehow. Let's see. Of course, this works with. 0 because f of 0 is equal to 2f of 0, which means uh, all, all of it is 0. So what I'm going to do is we clearly know that if we test anything out, f of 1 times 0 is equal to f of 1 plus, wait, let me see, is it an open interval? Oh, yep, it's an open interval. Okay, never mind. So we can't use 0. So... Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is we're going to, let's see, test out both 1. f of 1 is equal to f, f of 1 plus f of 1, which obviously means that f of 1 is equal to 0. But, of course, if f, uh, a is equal to b, then this is going to be uh, a times b equals a squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say f of x squared is equal to 2f of x. Wait, no, yeah. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative via the chain rule, which gives us f prime of x times 2x, oh, f prime of x squared times 2x is equal to 2f prime of x. So essentially, x f prime of x squared is equal to uh, f prime of x. So, of course, if we plug in 1 to this formula, we get f prime of 1 equals f prime of 1, which means that if this is true and the derivative exists, then this formula is valid for any... What? Okay. Okay, there we go. So this formula... Oh my gosh x f prime of x squared is equal to f prime of x, there is no point uh, in the positive real numbers where this is undefined. Because, of course, this is a real number, this is also always a real number, and this is also always a real number. So, in the same way, we can take this. So, essentially, if f prime of 1 exists, which proves this equation too, true, because f prime of 1 is equal to f prime of 1, then if f prime of 1 exists, this equation is true, which, since this equation is valid 
for all real numbers, then that means that it exists in all real numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me see. Okay. If f oh, prime of 1 is equal to 2, then find the nth derivative of f at 3. So let's see. So if f prime of 1 is equal to 2, what does that mean? Well, that means that... Let me erase this. Uh, oh. Okay. So if f prime of 1 is equal to 2, what happens if we plug this in? Well, oh wait, f prime of 1 equals f prime of 1. We're hit at, with a dead end. So instead, what I'm going to do is try and plug a different equation in. Say, for example, let's see. Mm, why don't we do something like f of a plus f of 1 over a? Yeah, that would work. So f of x plus f of 1 over x is equal to f of 1. So, of course, taking the derivative on both sides, I'm just going to get 0. Oh, never mind. Okay, wait, no, wait, yeah, never mind. So how are we going to get f, uh, f of 1? Hmm. That's uh, f prime of 1. That is a great question. So let me think, oh, actually, maybe this should work. Plus uh, f of 1 over x is equal to f of 1. So we take the derivative, we get 0 over here is equal to minus 1 over x squared, uh, and then f of x, f prime of x. So now that means that 1 minus 0, oh. Okay, so how do we find f prime of 1? Well, let's see. Is there anything else we can attempt? Anything similar to this we can find? Well, okay, let's try. Oh, I've got an idea. We can obviously find anything we want with this besides 1. Because, for example, we get f prime of 2 is equal to 2 f prime of 4. Oh, great. Okay, so let's see. Mm. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the square root of 3 here to get rad 3 f prime of 3 is equal to f prime of, oh wait, is equal to f prime of root 3. And here's the thing. We can infinitely differentiate with this. Okay, so infinitely differentiating, though, is very hard, because then we'd have to use the product rule. So we'd have, we'd have to use something like this. And of course, this is going to become a huge mess if we continue. So let's see. Uh oh. What can we do to keep this going? Well, okay. Our mission is just to find under what conditions f of eight times b is equal to. Under what conditions is f prime of a? Uh, f prime of 1 equal to 2. Mm. Well, I have a sort of an idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's see. We're going to just say a is a constant and b is x. So then we get a times f prime of ax is equal to this plus f prime of x. So then what happens if, uh, no, no, I don't, I, let me see. If we get a f prime of a is equal to f prime of 1, oh, that might actually be useful. We already know this is 2. 
So if a f prime of a is equal to 2, then, wait a second, so then we get a f double prime of, oh, uh, wait, but then once we take the derivative, this side is going to be equal to 0. So let's see. So I had sort of an idea there. Let's see. Oh, I think I got it. So let b be x to the n. So this is equal to f of a plus f of x to the n. This becomes, of course, n x n minus 1, f x to the n minus 1, no, n, f prime of x to the n. And this is going to be what? Right. Um, a times uh, n x n minus 1 f prime of a x to the n. And of course, these would cancel out. Ah, oh, that's a pickle. Okay. So it looks like we can find this first derivative, of course. f prime of 3 is equal to 2 over 3. But then maybe we have to utilize this to keep moving forward. But this gets increasingly difficult as time goes on. Of course, you can plug in and pray that it works. Mm. So let's see. You get uh, 1 minus 2x squared is equal to... Wait. Oh, what I could do to simplify this is say we can just sub in a new variable. So this is 2x f prime prime of x plus f prime of x is equal to f prime prime of x. Mm -hmm. Great. So now I'm going to erase this, which was in the center. And we're going to write that f prime of x is equal to two, 1 minus 2x as a double prime of x. And now we can do this. Taking this next derivative gives us mm, minus 2 on the outside. Oh, wait a second. Oh, then I think we must use the product rule again. But it shouldn't be too hard. So 1 minus 2x. Next one we get is this. Mm -hmm. And then plus, let's think, 1 minus. So there's clearly a pattern here, of course, but I'm struggling to see it. So this becomes 1 minus 2x over 3. But does the pattern continue? It might be a half factorial kind of situation. Let's see. Oh, yeah. The pattern will probably continue. But just to be sure, if we take the derivative of this, now it gives us minus 2 over 3. So then f up triple prime of x plus whatever else is there. So then we get 1 plus 2 over 3, which is obviously 5 over 3. Oh, this is difficult. OK. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Oh, what the? OK. So I'm trying my best to get this done. Let's see. So this is going to be equal to 5 over 3. I think I'll just keep the coefficients here, honestly. 3 f double prime of x is equal to this. 5 over 3 f triple prime of x is equal to this. Uh, when we take the derivative of the next one, we get 
well, okay, this is going to keep continuing. So what happens when we actually plug in and get all of this done? Well, if we plug in 3, we get 1 minus 6. This is negative 5. F prime prime of 3 is minus 5. F prime prime of 3. And, of course, we know this is 2 over 3, which means 2 over 3 is minus 5 f prime prime over 3. Or, in other words, f prime prime over 3 is equal to minus 2 over 15. Mm -hmm. Then, when we plug in this over here, what do we get? Minus 2 over 5 is equal to minus 5 f triple prime of x, which means f triple prime of 3 is equal to minus, uh, wait, uh, 2 over 25. Then, once we multiply it by this, we get 2 over 15 here. So, f quadruple prime is going to be minus 5, 2 over 15, which is going to be minus 2 over 75. Mm-hmm. So, how does the pattern actually continue? That's the question. Because clearly there is a pattern, but I don't seem to be getting it very much. So, let's see. Mm. No, don't move on to the next question. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do one final check with the fourth derivative. So, of course, you take the derivative on both sides and wait a second. This is wrong. This is all wrong. Oops. We take the derivative of this. And then we take the derivative of this again, and we get... Oh... Well, that explains quite a lot. Okay, so this problem is a lot easier than I thought. Is equal to... So essentially, it's a recursive relation saying fn of x is equal to 1 minus 2x times fn plus 1x. And of course, there's something over here, which is going to be 2n minus 1. Which means we have a good recurrence relation. Because now, we already know, if we plug in the... F well, we already know f prime of x... Uh, f prime of 3 is equal to 2 over 3. And now, all we have to do here is plug in 3. So this is now, don't worry, we're almost done. This is now 3. This is now negative 5. And this is fn plus 1. So essentially, fn plus 1x is equal to, uh, let's see, uh, 1 minus 2n over 5 of, wait, is that right? Yeah, it should be. Over 5 of uh, fn of x. So, and of course, this is going to be 3, not x. Okay, so I got it. fn plus 1 of 3 is equal to 1 minus 2n over 5 of fn of 3. So, of course, this keeps going up. We start from n equals 1, and we just keep going. So, this gives us a value for every term. Thank you. So, if you see, I don't have